I don't know about you, but I loved rushing home to watch my shows before homework, and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was one of them. Fred Rogers felt like the friendliest dad or grandfather on the block. So warm and welcoming of all kinds of people, it's no surprise that millions of people grew up knowing the phrase, won't you be my neighbor? He always gave somebody a chance to just be special on their own without any expectations. Here's everything you need to know before you go. He was just this beloved figure who saw goodness in everybody. Fred Rogers was a major presence in children's TV programming for more than 50 years. He was inspired to create children's content due to his own childhood experiences. He was a shy, sickly, and lonely child, but came out of his shell in high school. His goal was to always encourage and nurture children to become their best selves which led to his first show in Canada from 1962 to 1966. And for all of you young kids out there who have never seen an episode, let me fill you in. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired on PBS. In each half hour segment, Rogers started the show by entering his home, clearly his set, and sang the song, Won't you be my neighbor? It was his ritual to replace his jacket and dress shoes he was wearing with a zip up cardigan and blue sneakers. In each episode, he spoke directly to the camera, reaching beyond the set to engage instinctively with his viewers. He covered a variety of topics that most other children's television shows shied away from. These were subject matters like anger, competition, divorce, and war. There was always something you can do with the mad that you feel. Fred Rogers gained the love and admiration of many when he spoke about the death of his goldfish in a 1970 episode. His empathetic approach to tricky subjects always taught children to lead with peace and kindness. He also had frequent and sometimes recurring guests that had different occupations to teach kids about the many talents and roles that people can have in this world. Well, you learn something different every day, don't you? That's right, we certainly do. Sometimes we're learning, we don't even know we're learning. Mr. McFeely, the neighborhood post office delivery man, appeared in almost every episode. His catchphrase was, Speedy deliveries. In addition to his wonderful presence on TV, Fred Rogers was also a loving husband to his wife Joanne of 50 years, of which he had two sons with. He was known for having a spiritual life as well, studying a variety of faiths and culture as a Presbyterian minister. His legacy includes dozens of books, both for children and adults, and the release of a number of musical recordings. And in 2001, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He also earned a Lifetime Achievement Emmy and was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame. In 2018, the documentary Won't You Be My Neighbor was released and covered the life and legacy of our dear legend, Mr. Fred Rogers. The film is the highest grossing biographical documentary of all time and won three Critics' Choice Documentary Awards, a Gotham Award, a Producers Guild of America Award, and an Independent Spirit Award. The film A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood takes us behind the set of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood to tell us more about this kind man we know and love, but gives us more insight into how he directly affected people. You love broken people like me. Sometimes we have to ask for help, and that's okay. I started looking at many, 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 many hours of the half hour of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I read the scripts, his handwritten scripts of the shows, but rather than try to go with a microscopic, mole-for-mole -mole imitation of Fred Rogers, it was a cadence, a quietness, a slowness. He looks adorable as Fred. He looks wonderful. Fred Rogers was a huge fan of Tom Hanks. It's a very needful film right now. He leaves behind a legacy of peace and compassion that serves as a teachable wisdom for generations to come. Hearing Fred's voice is really reassuring in these times. There's something about his message that feels more important now than ever. So now you know, and now you can go see A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood in theaters November 22nd.